May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? The sound of power. We'll, we'll be starting the 10 o'clock presentations in one minute. Please feel free to time it. One minute, so please take your seat. If you want to grab an extra coffee, not available. Want to grab a treat? Not available yet. And incidentally, I've noticed that Neil Ellis is here today. I also own a blue tie. Good morning, my name is John Henderson and I'm in the MC today. Um, for those of you who don't realize it, I really can't tell time. Uh, I'd like to thank those who are involved for uh, asking me to be your master of ceremonies for this event. As a uh, former president of the Chamber of Commerce once said, I ask you to remember to turn your cell phones on when you leave. Welcome to a brief but important moment in the history of Belleville and Hastings County. Since its inception in the 1950s, the Hastings County, I hear that, I hear that. The Hastings County archives have been moved many times from a closet of the Jerry Boyce residence to this wonderful facility. Today we gather to celebrate and we gather to also congratulate. Please, if possible, would you stand now for the singing of our national anthem. Thank you to Mary Lynn Morgan and pianist Rick Penner. Among the dignitaries and audience uh, today, let me recognize the Deputy Mayor of Quinty West, Jim Algay, along with members of the current and past and perhaps even future city councils here in Belleville. Our first speaker today is His Worship, Mayor Tasso Christopher. Thank you very much and good morning. Good morning to everybody in the audience. Good morning, back. Good morning. Thank you. That was easy. Yeah? Um, not scripted. Uh, that I had commented earlier this morning when I first came in, I'd uh, brought uh, our personal greetings to the warden, and we both looked at each other and said, "You know, this is an absolutely beautiful uh, result of a uh, of a community project." And it's interesting because for the last uh, year and a couple of three months, you know, we've taken the stance as, uh, as the municipal leader for the city of Belleville and also the cheerleader and also uh, warden uh, Rick Phillips and I know our partner to, uh, to Quinney West, Mayor Harrison, you know, we, we've taken the stance of no borders, no boundaries. And this is a result, this is a positive resolution and a positive result of an attitude of no borders, no boundaries, and we collectively should be very proud of that. Very, very proud of that. And thank you very much to the warden. So today is uh, my profound privilege to say thank yous. 
Uh, thank you to a number of uh, individuals, and I know everyone got their uh, their uh, their uh, notes and their greetings uh, from the association. But this is a special time. We need to take a couple of minutes and really appreciate you know where we were and where we are and where we're going to go and how we got there. So it is it is my pleasure to bring you greetings from all the fellow council and all the staff in the city of Belleville. Uh, I, I'm profoundly honored to be the cheerleader in, in one of these many, many projects that have uh, positive resolutions. Um, this goes to show you how important it is for, uh, for our community to preserve our histories, our presence, and our futures on a go-forward basis. And this is, this is the beginning. This is a foundation, I'm sure, of many collective partnerships uh, throughout our communities. We would not uh, have had this opportunity to, to showcase uh, these type of projects, these types of preservations without a number of individuals, a number of, of, uh, of volunteers and a number of passionate people that uh, live, work, and, uh, and play in our city. I like to identify uh, three very important people. Everybody is very important in a successful project like this, but I like to call them my three amigos. Uh, Mr. Jerry Boyce, Mr. Orlin French, and uh, Mr. Richard Hughes. I've just got a couple of notes here I want to identify uh, some characteristics and leadership qualities and passion of these individuals. Mr. Jerry Boyce, uh, he's the guiding leader of the Historical Society for 59 years. That's longer than I've been alive. Uh, under Jerry's leadership and the team of hardworking volunteers, the archive collection has grown to tens of thousands of priceless pieces, irreplaceable documents, photos, and maps, and much, much more. Thank you very much, Mr. Boyce. Round of applause. <laughs> Mr. Orlin French, we had a few bumps in the road about a year and a half ago, but we got through it. Uh, Mr. French established the Historical Society Capital Campaign Program uh, and, uh, with the archives, and he led a small team of volunteers through two years of very aggressive fundraising and totaling of $262,000 and the furnishing of this beautiful facility. Thank you very much, Mr. French. <laughs> Soft-spoken Richard Hughes. Um, we crossed paths six, seven, eight years ago in, uh, I think, either council or planning, and we had, uh, again, I call them little bumps and challenges, and this is, a, again, a, a, a result of an individual that has, that has passion and vision and will not allow something that is good for a community to go away. He went back and regrouped and brought people around the table. I mean, and this is the result. Uh, Richard is the president of the Historical Society since 2013, and he's the chairman of the Archives Advisory Committee, uh, and also participating in the development of the archives from the beginning, in the recent years working cooperation with the city, the county, and in the final phases of this work. Thank you very much, sir. I also want to say a special thank you, they're all special thank yous, I'll lead that way, a special thank you to fellow uh, Councillor uh, Garnet Thompson and also uh, Councillor Pat Cohane uh, for taking the lead and supporting the archives from the beginning um, and establishing a relocation committee and moving forward. But I got to tell you a small little story. A couple, three years ago, we just finished off from a, uh, a library board meeting. Uh, uh, CEO uh, Trevor Pross is in the room. We finished the meeting, we're walking out, and we were still in the in the process of, of doing some uh, think tanking work about the long-term vision of the archives. And you really need to, to really truthfully believe between the individuals of Garnet and our CEO, Trevor Pross, right now, they just looked at each other and said, this would be the foundation of an archives going forward. So I profoundly say thank you to Garnet and to our CEO, Trevor Pross, for that vision. Thank you very much. And also MP and uh, Mayor Ellis is in the audience. I want to also thank you for uh, your consideration and your vision of this project on a go-forward basis. Thank you very much, Neil. Appreciate that. Uh, but inevitably, as I've said, and I will continue to say, without staff, vision, and volunteers, we're going nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. And this is the definition of a result of all those three coming together. I want to personally and truthfully, on behalf of myself, fellow council, and all of the volunteers, I'd like to thank uh, the staff that participated in putting it together. Director Mark Fleur was an intricate part of uh, developing a great partnership 
and in finalizing the, the positive resolution. Thank you, uh, Director Fleur. Also, Joel Carbrandt, uh, Rob Klassen, our staff members, they got involved in project management. Again, a number of challenges, they turned them into opportunities, and uh, what we're gonna see later on this afternoon is a, uh, is a great project. Thank you very much, muchly appreciated for all your efforts. Also, Sharon White, she was a professional archivist and she led the development for five years before her retirement. I know she's in here somewhere because I said, oh, there she is there. Thank you. Thank you very much for all your hard work. Can I have a round of applause for Sharon? <laughs> and I'd also like to identify and recognize uh, some, uh, some other staff and our, our archivists now. Amanda Hill, uh, Ted Marichek is our CBO of the City of Belleville, Mark Coyle and uh, Cheryl Sign. They're our IT team in the City of Belleville that uh, integrate and assist uh, the library and the archives program. Krista Keller uh, is the assistant that was the administrator of the project and kind of kept the train on the track. And uh, thank you so much to all those individuals and to our staff. It's very much appreciated. A big time thank you to the library board. I had the profound privilege to work with uh, Gurney and the library board. <laughs> I'm thinking four, six, eight years. It, it, it is, it is, uh, it's quite a board. I mean, uh, they have a lot of vision. Um, they have a lot of uh, challenges, and they've turned them into positive opportunities. We're sitting in a facility on a floor that that is housing millions of dollars of art, artifacts, archives. Wouldn't couldn't happen unless we had individuals like our members on the uh, Bubble Library Board. So I thank you all that's in the crowd in the audience. Thank you very much for your efforts. Also like to identify and welcome uh, the architect, uh, Ray Zabak, if he's in the audience. Thank you very much for your efforts. Um, and I'm sure you probably got paid, so he's good to go. And also uh, Tommy Belch from Belch Construction, an old school buddy. If he's in the audience, thank you very much for all the work that he worked uh, with the staff and the volunteers. Thank you very much. Also like to identify and thank our partners, um, the warden Rick Phillips the County of Hastings and all the staff and all the volunteers and also Mr. Jim Pine and, and uh, Jim Duffin. Uh, they were involved in developing the legal structure and the operational approach, how we're gonna make this a successful joint facility. I wanna thank you very much and they've been involved in an ongoing basis and we're looking forward when and if we're gone that that relationship will only grow and get stronger and get deeper. Thank you very much to the Warden Phillips and all your staff, thank you. Last but not least, a sincere thanks to everybody that is here. A sincere thank you to all the volunteers. A sincere thank you to the family members that allowed the volunteers to get engaged and spend those endless days and endless hours to have a positive resolution. Um, we need to remember one thing that we're very fortunate. We have world-class volunteers, we have world-class staff, and we live in a world-class community. Thank you very much and have a very nice morning. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Rumor has it, incidentally, that uh, after today's festivities, if you would like to get in touch with Tasso Christopher, you can get you a really good deal on some gear at uh, Four Seasons Sports. You're welcome. That's $5, but we'll talk later also. It's also rumored that before running for, uh, for City Council, His Worship reread Belleville, uh, Popular History, AKO, or AKA, Stuff the Chamber of Commerce Doesn't Want You to Know. That was written by Jerry Boyce. Our next speaker is Honor Warden Rick Phillips of the County of Hastings. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman, uh, MC. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for the opportunity to be here today. On behalf of Hastings County Council, I'm thrilled to be here today, sharing in the su success of the many years worth of work and vision to celebrate the opening of this community archives. Wow, what a journey we've had since 2007, 2008. Uh, this, uh, this, this is a project or this was a project continues to be of love, hard work, and commitment from all of us, and it shows what, when communities get together, what can be done for the good of all of our citizens. Um, I, I want to take a moment to, re to recognize the incredible determination of a few people, 
who I believe without them, we would not be here today. To Miss Sharon White, Mr. Orlin French, Mr. Richard Hughes, and Mr. Jerry Boyce, and the current and past members of Hastings County Historical Society, your passion and dedication to this project was the driving force behind its, its success. It is amazing what a group of volunteers can accomplish when they uh, have a project such as this to work with. Uh, congratulations on your tenacity, your patience, and your vision. Thank you. <laughs> to my colleagues from the Council of the City of Belleville, Hastings County considers itself lucky to be able to have an opportunity to build strong relationships with you that we have achieved and we believe that it is the cornerstone to us being able to deliver, to deliver quality services to the residents of the City of Belleville and across the County of Hastings, such as this new facility. To Mayor Tasso Christopher and past Mayor and MP Neil Ellis, where is Neil? Oh, we're way back at the back. Neil, there's a chair right up front here for you. <laughs> when I'm done, I'll go back to the back. <laughs> you, you come up to the front. You, uh, you're an important part of this. I want to thank both of you for uh, supporting our strong partnership, and I'm proud that we, of what we've been able to build together with the assistance of the Hastings County Historical Society. I just want to take another moment to thank a few more people past and present members of County Council who have served on the Community Archives Committee and have supported this project from its beginning. Thank you very much for your hard work and dedication. Uh, current representatives are here today, Councilors Norm Clark from the town of Deserano and Vivian Bloom from the municipality of Hastings Highlands. I want to thank them for their hard work. Other past members, in, uh, including uh, Councillors Wanda Donaldson, Bernice Jenkins, Bonnie Adams, and past County Councillors Dave Panabaker and Margaret Walsh. Your assistance, advice, and, and guidance throughout this process has helped us to get where we are today. Councillor Garnet Thompson, who I, will, who I also believe has been involved since near inception of this project, Thank you, as always, for your dedication and support to our partnership. And I must also, at this time, speak to the support of the library, and in particular, Trevor Pross, uh, and the board for assisting us in finally finding the appropriate home for us. Thank you very much. I want to also take a moment to recognize a county staff member who has also been involved since the beginning of this project and certainly assisted and supported the county through our process and was always there to provide for us the advice that we needed. Jim Duffin, our deputy clerk, was the staff contact for us, for us on this project and like every project he oversees, was a constant source of guidance and ensured that all the details were addressed and considered. Thank you, Jim, for your great advice and assistance, as you always do. Thank you. <laughs> and finally, uh, thank you to uh, uh, the staff of the City of Belleville, notably Mark Fleur and others who have seen this project through its many changes and visions. Thank you for your work, for your hard work and perseverance as we waded through and have ultimately ended up where we are here today. What we have achieved together is something that will protect our history and our heritage for many years to come, and I am proud and pleased to have been a part of it. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much, Your Honor, and uh, thank you for giving up your seat for our next speaker, too, for that matter. The uh, rumor has it that it was uh, Rick who reread the Jerry Boyce publication, Historic Hastings, before taking his political position. Now here's a uh, fellow that we all know and we all love. Would you please welcome the Member of Parliament for the Bay of Quinty, Neil Ellis.
Thank you, John, and uh, thank you for those kind words. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I got a call from the Minister of Infrastructure's office, and uh, they said, do you know anything about this uh, project in, uh, in Belleville, the uh, Historical Society, the Archives? And I go, no, never heard of it. <laughs> but uh, having said that, they wanted to know if I was going to attend, and I said I thought that I was still uh, on the, uh, the warden's wish list or good list and that I would be here today. So. He uh, offered me uh, to say, if I could say a few kind words uh, on behalf of, of the minister, and I said, not a problem, so they sent me about a five-page speech. <laughs> Having said that, I talked to the warden, and I said, maybe I won't read all of this, and I can beg forgiveness after, but then I could be history. But uh, having said that, it's about governments working together. And when you look at uh, the federal government to be able to contribute to not only a project that uh, brings out this many people that uh, help support it, whether it was our volunteers, our past city councils, or the community in general, and that spreads through the communities, the community of Quinney West, Hastings County, and ourselves. Um, this is about taking that history and giving that history to our grandkids and even ourselves to, to come back in here and look. And I had the honor, and I hope everybody in here has had a chance earlier this morning to go on a tour or will be going on a tour, that uh, it was upstairs in, in the Belleville room, I think it was called, and uh, looking for council minutes. And I found a, a, our first council meeting uh, uh, that I was involved in, and I think the year was 1918. So it's, uh, and uh, I think that was a great meeting, John. So uh, you were there also. So, but. Uh, and uh, that history is, is needed, and whether it's uh, uh, history for councils to work on, of uh, our environmental uh, issues that we have in this past town to, to dig up, and, and where is these caused, uh, it's about uh, uh, land claims, it's about, uh, it's just about how Belleville has been built, and how this area, Hastings County and, and Quinney West have been built in the Bay of Quinney regions. So our government recognizes that investing in infrastructure is essential to equipping municipalities to the building blocks that they need to support economic growth. And it's about growth, it's about creating jobs, it's about things like public transit. And as government, we will be supporting that. It's an honor today to represent the minister on behalf of the minister. Uh, he loves projects like this. Hopefully, we'll be doing more, more announcements. Uh, I know uh, you're representing uh, Mayor Harrison today. I think Jim is. There's some announcements coming in your uh, riding. There's some announcements coming in the county, so I won't be in trouble today to say this is one of the first announcements for some money to help our communities build, but it's about communities. Thank you for uh, having me today. Great work, great effort, and we finally got it done. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Neil will no longer be able, incidentally, to get you a good deal on a bicycle or an ice cream bar for that matter. But today, there are sunny ways ahead, so we're fine. Before he ran for city council, rumor has it that Neil reread Belleville, The Birth of a City by Jerry Boyce. There's a thread here, isn't there? Now city councilor and chairman of the Belleville Public Library Board, Mr. Garnet Thompson. Thank you, John. This is a fabulous, fabulous day in the city of Belleville. And I am so proud to sit up, stand up here and give a few words on behalf of the library board. This is an amazing, an amazing day. Thank you, John, and thank you to all who are coming to a wonderful event. As the councillor and chair of the library board, it is my pleasure to congratulate everyone for a job well done completing this project and partnership to bring a professional archives, and I mean a professional archives run by many, many volunteers, a professional archives facility to the city and to the county, which we have waited for many, many years to come to a one spot in the city of Belleville. It is going to be wonderful for to have our community have a one-stop shopping location for arts, culture, and the archives, and the art gallery, the library, the historical society, all sharing the same building, and in the future, the Heritage Office Committee will be moving to the library. I know a lot of people worked hard to make this happen, and I'd like to take a few minutes to thank them now. And I know some of the people have already been thanked by other people, but I feel it's important to chair the library board. 
On behalf of the Library Board and the staff, and I want to thank Richard Hughes, Chair of the Archives Group, Warden Phillips for the County of Hastings County, Mayor Tasso Christopher for this, and City Council for their leadership and support. Also on behalf of the Library Board, I'd like to thank the city staff who made this happen. And a special thank you, who's already been thanked a couple of times, Mark Fleur, Joel Carbrandt, Rob McCloshan, and the Recreation and Culture and Service Department for the City of Belleville. And I'd also like to thank our former archivist, Sharon White's here today, and our new archivist, Amanda Hill, and also Richard Hughes again for Historical Society and all the many, many volunteers that partake in the daily records of the archives over the many years. They have put in thousands and thousands of hours and will continue to put in thousands and thousands of hours in the new archives. I remember getting on council a number of years ago. One of the first places I went had an invitation from Marlon French, as a matter of fact, to go to the archives in Canavton. I walked into that building and I said, at that point in time, something needs to be done in the future. But with many people's help, we got to this point today. Not one person, not two people, but many, many people got us to this location today. Thank you, each and every one of you, for doing what you do for a very important facility in our building. Thank yous. As chair of the library board, I also want to say a big thank you to the library board members and a couple of them here today. Um, uh, Councillor Mitch Panachuk's here. Uh, Jerry, um, Jerry's here. Uh, I don't know whether Eric's here. Um, I think that's the three that's here from the library board. Thank you very much for coming out. It's a big thank you to the library board members and to the staff of the library and art gallery, to our customers that had patience during the renovations. But I want to say a big thank you to the CEO, Trevor Pross. Trevor, would you stand up? He's, where is Trevor? Trevor's back there. As the mayor said, without his backing from square one, this would not have happened in this particular building. And I believe we have the best location in the city of Belleville for our future archives. Also want to thank Holly DeWear and a special thank you to building superintendent Bernard Knoll. And Bernard's here away at the back. Thank you, Bernard. <laughs> who put a lot of work and time in helping make the renovations projects go smoothly. The library staff also worked very hard during the year leading up to the start of the renovations and prepared for the space for the archives to come in. For this work and for their persistence during the renovations, I sincerely thank you on behalf of the Archives Committee on behalf of the Library Board. I'm almost pleased to see the Community Archives facility in this place, in this great building, which we are all, all lucky to have from the vision in the past, in past councils. Having this cultural service all together under one roof will be an excellent resource for the downtown and for our entire community. Thus, I thank you on behalf of the Library Board. And lastly, I want to thank for the opportunity to sit on the Archives Committee right from the beginning and this could not have been possible without other city councillors and staff being involved, county councillors and staff being involved, the Belleville Warden, or the, the County Warden, the Belleville City staff, historical volunteers. I want to thank you for every one of you for the number of years that you put on the Archives Committee to make it happen. Richard, thank you for your leadership. Orland, thank you for your past leadership. And thank you for your dedication. We're in for a wonderful day, a wonderful opportunity, and I'm very, very happy to say welcome to the Belleville Library, welcome to the archives in the city of Belleville. Thank you.
Garnet may not uh, any longer be able to catch a good deal on a men's suit, but you can talk to him about a pair of slightly used red women's shoes. Garnet is involved, obviously, in this community an awful lot. But there, then again, so are so many members of city council. But before Garnet Thompson ran for city council, he, of course, reread the text Belleville City Council and uh, Belleville City Hall, 1873 to 1989, written by Jerry Boyce. <laughs> Would you please welcome the president of the Hastings County Historical Society, Richard Hughes. Well, good morning, everyone. There's uh, certain benefits and drawbacks of being the fifth speaker. If you've uh, heard these words before, try to keep your heads up. Uh, you know, I try not to put you to sleep. But the Hastings County Historical Society is so very proud and indeed pleased to, to join in this celebration today with our partners in this archive project, with the city of Belleville, with the county of Hastings, uh, with our, our distinguished guests who are here today, and most of all, of course, with all of you who have come out uh, to, uh, to be part of this wonderful celebration. This day has been made possible through an endless uh, determination, uh, uh, years of hard work. Uh, I could never put into words the amount of effort that has gone into this and uh, the many professional skills that have all been brought together to, uh, to make this uh, day a possibility. And now we can celebrate this major achievement in the history of, of, of our city, of our, of our county, and uh, look forward with uh, great anticipation. However, it, it, the fact is that this, this day actually began 60 years ago, when a small group of concerned citizens came together one rainy night, and uh, each of them dug out a dollar bill from their pocket, in those days there were dollar bills, and uh, threw them in, and they created the Hastings County Historical Society. And in the midst of this small group of, uh, of uh, people was a young, fresh-faced high school teacher, newly arrived in Belleville, but filled with enthusiasm, our own Jerry Boyce. And, uh, that, that, began, that began a process. And in fact, uh, they started out with a handful of documents, a few old photos, uh, some artifacts, and they brought them together. But it launched a process that uh, grew tremendously year by year by year over the last six decades. It's amazing to think about it. And all of this under the guidance of Jerry Boyce, with teams, hundreds, hundreds of volunteers, uh, very, very hardworking people, very determined people. Ultimately, this collection of irreplaceable documents, priceless photographs, maps, and so much more, all of this numbered into the tens of thousands. And I say that, tens of thousands of irreplaceable historical documents and photos. The very heritage and history of our county, our cities, our towns, our villages, our townships, all captured in these, uh, in these documents. So back in 2006, 10 years ago, the directors of the Historical Society met under then President Orlin French, and they proposed, uh, they brought forward a proposal that this collection had reached a point, it was time to move to another level. It was time to move into a professional situation. And so um, they, they, uh, they, they brought forward the idea, they developed the idea over a number of meetings, and then they brought it to city and county councils back in 2007. And at first, we must admit, there was a lot of questions, uh, uh, some head shaking in various directions, a lot of head scratching, uh, and, there, and there were some doubts. However, the more the matter was discussed and the councils considered it and worked on it, they came on board. And when the city and county council came on board uh, with the Historical Society, we formed a partnership, an amazing partnership that then brought it forward over the, over the ensuing nine years into what we have today. So this was no, uh, no small matter, this partnership. But the Historical Society didn't stop there. It's not enough to come up with a proposal, throw it on the table, and then sit back and let people uh, handle it. The Society, again, under the chairmanship of Orlin French, formed a capital campaign committee. We called it the Unlock the Archives Committee to raise funds to furnish this great facility. <laughs> It took a lot of work, and I do recall in the early days as we approached people for donations, they said, archives, 
there is no archives. What's this all about? They, and most people already had their favorite charities, but with the determination uh, under the leadership of Orland and others, uh, the businesses came on board. Uh, we are deeply indebted to the Parrot Foundation, which made two very generous donations, the Ontario Trillium Fund, and many, many businesses and organizations across our city and, and county who came forward with their donations. But I must underline, most importantly here, the very large number of individuals who dug into their pocket, dug into their savings, and, and do made donations towards this archives. Many of you are here today, many people in our audience today, uh, many pensioners, many people on limited income, found some money to put into the archives, and now you can take satisfaction today that your generosity has contributed in a material way to this fabulous facility. <laughs> The word community and community archives has a real meaning. So we're so pleased to be able to raise, as, uh, as the mayor mentioned a few minutes ago, $262,000 towards the furnishing of this archives. And so when you see it and, and you see the excellent facilities, the uh, archival shelving and such, this is where that uh, quarter million dollars went. I do believe that this project is actually one of a kind in Ontario. We've, we've checked uh, this, we're not 100% sure, but we can't find another one that has three partners brought together, both in the creation and in the development and in the operation of an archives. So, so Belleville and Hastings County and the Historical Society is a monumental partnership. We know that the Hastings County Historical Society is already one of the largest in Ontario and certainly one of the most active. And uh, now we look forward to an even greater activity of the society in conjunction with the archives to, work, to further our history and our heritage in this wonderful area that we call home. Now I must comment, as others have done, on the amazing team that brought this, uh, con brought this project from, from a concept in, in, in the minds of the society to the concrete and glass reality we have today. I always hesitate to give names because over the last 10 years there have been literally hundreds of people uh, giving their time and talents. But I will highlight a few. First of all, uh, our archivist, our initial archivist, Sharon White, uh, brought her professional skills to the planning process to make sure that what was developed was the true archives because an archives is not, not like a library, it's not like other organizations, it requires special special assets. Our architect, Ray Zabak, and our city building manager, Joel Carbrandt, they moved these plans into uh, concrete shapes. Uh, our deputy, co deputy county clerk, Jim Duffin, uh, brought the participation of the uh, Hastings, Co Hastings County to all of these discussions, ensured that, uh, ensured that all of the partners were fully, uh, fully involved. Also the work of several councillors over the past years in the Archives uh, Advisory Committee coordinated these co very complex relationships between the staff, between the technical people, and, and, the, and the city and county council. Recognition must also be given, as, as was done by, uh, by Councillor Thompson, to, uh, to the uh, library, to the library board, and particularly to the library CEO, Trevor uh, Pross, who have uh, cooperated so closely in bringing all of this together. Now, it's not easy to keep all of these players on the same song sheet. You could imagine the complexity. Um, boy, you, no, maybe you couldn't imagine the complexity. <laughs> But, but we had the uh, benefit in this of an amazing conductor of this great symphony, as I'll call it, with the overall project manager being in the hands of director Mark Fleur. Uh, it, was, it was quite a task, and uh, as I say, now that we've reached the goal, uh, we, can, we, you know, we can shake our head and smile, uh, but it was, it was uh, quite, a, quite a task over the last nine years. So everyone can, today can take a deep bow as we see the wonderful results of our labors. But one final thought, the people who should be celebrating today, and I'm sure will be celebrating in the future, are the citizens of Hastings County. From the shores of the Bay of Quinte to the top of Hastings Highlands, they ha now have a safe, a secure home for their history, for their heritage, state-of-the-art, professionally managed, with an excellent team of volunteers, and it's open for them to use. This is a very critical point. This is for the people. So indeed, as others have said before me, we have a great day, a great celebration, and I'm so proud uh, on behalf of the Hastings County Historical Society to be part of it. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, Richard. Richard has read and reread every book, every book ever written by Jerry Boyce. <laughs> I'll now call upon his worship, Mayor Tasso Christopher, to make a rather present or rather special presentation. Uh, can we have uh, Sharon White come up here, please? Hi, Camper. How are you? On uh, behalf of the city, obviously everybody knows Sharon White. Sharon was with us, and she retired. Uh, she was uh, one of the leaders of, uh, of, a, of a, a huge team that assembled uh, the success story of our archives. So uh, on behalf of myself and fellow council, and all the uh, men and women that work in this beautiful city, I would like to give you a small certificate of appreciation of, of ours uh, to you for all the work that you did and a very small little gift. <laughs> <laughs> you need both hands to carry it. Best wishes on your retirement. Well, it's hard to believe I'm actually standing in this building after all the time working towards it. And everyone has already mentioned the, the names of the people who worked so hard on this project, and I won't repeat them all, but my heartfelt thank you to all of them for helping me do my job. And uh, to repeat another theme was, the partnerships and the way people came together to make this project happen. The city council mayor and councillors, the county warden and councillors, the city staff, especially Mark Fleur, thank you Mark, and the historical society of course, Orland, uh, Richard, and the amazing team of wonderful dedicated volunteers that work in this archives with all your hard work I hardly had to do anything <laughs> but this the other thing was these people they did the hard work they maintained the vision of course there's bumps and steps along the way change of possible location all these things took time and and hard work to get over and keeping that vision in place and my smile today is nearly as broad as Garnet Thompson's and Richard Hughes and Orland French and Mark Fleur, everyone who worked so hard on this, Jerry Boyce, of course, too. Um, and now it's just so exciting to see the wonderful job that the new archivist, Amanda Hill, has done in bringing all the records here, maintaining that wonderful sense of camaraderie that was in the old building into this new building, which is larger and possibly a little colder at first when you come into it compared to what we had, but as Garnet said, it is a million times better. It's such a wonderful place here. The library has been so welcoming and thank you to everyone for today. <laughs> Congratulations, Sharon. And uh, now we move into the future, as it were, as I call upon Warden Rick Phillips to introduce our newly appointed archivist. Rick. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce to you our new appointed arch archivist, uh, Amanda Hill. Amanda has been with us for several months and has played a huge part in preparing for this day. We're also pleased to have Amanda with us as we embark in our journey of preserving our past and recording our future. Ladies and gentlemen, Amanda Hill. Archivists naturally take the long view on life and my perspective reaches back before there was even a county of Hastings and a city of Belleville, back to a time when refugees from the American Revolution were first settling in this area. I think about the indigenous people who were living here when those refugees arrived and how generous they were to share their lands and resources with the newcomers. When I look at the new community archives, I see generosity there too, 
in the financial contributions of individual donors and in the efforts of a whole community which acknowledges the importance of its past and which wants to share the resources represented by the records that we care for. Setting up a new archives is not something that every archivist gets to do in their career. And I'm delighted to have had the chance to work with the advisory committee, my City of Belleville colleagues, the staff of the Belleville Public Library, the Hastings County Historical Society's Board of Directors, and the builders and architects of this amazing new space. I would also like to pay tribute to the dedicated team of archives volunteers, including my predecessor, Sharon White, who have been generous, very generous, in donating their time over the last six months to wrap pack and label the collection, making the move into this building a hundred times easier than it would have been if I'd been trying to do it all by myself. Volunteers form the backbone of the community archives, and indeed this community generally, I think, and I would like to take this opportunity to formally announce that our splendid new reading room downstairs is going to be named after a person who's devoted very nearly 60 years of his life to making this day possible. Our new public space will be known as the Jerry Boyce Reading Room. Just want to show you this. I was um, I was so worried I was going to break that thing that I packed this box full of cotton gloves just to make sure. <laughs> Well, this is a special day. I've waited a few years for this. <laughs> October the 1st, 1957 was the date that the Historical Society began. It began in City Hall in the council chamber. And a dozen or so people were there. Only one or two of us survived. Not because of the groups of people who came in and, not the, and who helped to establish the museum and the archives and prepare Historic Hastings, Volume 1, 1967, sponsored by the County of Hastings. If you wish to read it, it's been reprinted. Copies are available. And I'm trying to finish up Volume 2 because 1967 was let me see, a couple of years ago anyway, and we're working on trying to complete volume two to bring the story up to date, and it will include a variety of topics. But this is a wonderful occasion, and I appreciate all the people, 
most of whom I recognize. It's been a long time, and I recall back in 67 in October, 57 in October the 1st, meeting in City Hall, a dozen people or perhaps 10, I don't think we kept track of them, but we had a dozen or so who joined the society by the end of the year, and the cost was $1 per person. I threw in $35 so we could buy a filing cabinet, a metal three-drawer, metal large cabinet. I don't know whether the archive still has it or not, but it moved at various times to different locations where the Historical Society was located because we didn't stay forever in one place. For a time, the archives were in the bathroom and the linen closet at 236 George Street. <laughs> May it long be remembered. <laughs> the workshops were held there. We had room for two card tables and eight chairs in the, in the bathroom, frequently largely inhabited. Fortunately, no one had to use the facility. <laughs> we moved from there to different other locations. I could, if I were so inclined, give you a listing of all of the places. I was thinking of them yesterday, but we were at 174 Albert Street, 236 George Street, second floor. 161 Albert, that's where the ceiling collapsed in the room in which the archives were stored. I can think of Tom Reitmeyer's house at 113 Dundas Street, where Tom kept some of the archives. Tom Ransom's surveys, uh, survey office on Front Street, up uh, in connection with Boyce's garage. Then in 1961, the museum and the registry office, our meetings in Shire Hall, Glanmore in 73, then Sir James Whitney, the site of the archives. It was in the infirmary, not because the documents were unwell, although they were getting that way because it was the climate control, it wasn't working. Then the Palmer House. That was where we had the dead pigeon. Thurlow Township Hall, the opening officially September the 10th, 2001. Then the Irish Hall. We didn't really make the move in there, and then the library. What a wonderful location. What an inspiration. So much we should be appreciated for all the people who contributed money and efforts. The archive angels, and I still call them the archive angels, although the present executive would like to get rid of the term. No. <laughs> A dissenting voice. Archive Angels has, has instituted that term, instituted by Orlin French, bless his angelic head. <laughs> the Irish Hall, not a good location. Fortunately, we moved out, and what a wonderful spot to be in here. The archives, community archives for Belleville and Hastings County. Wow, that's impressive, and I'm delighted to be here and able to stand before you and see so many people who have helped over the years with respect to establishing that museum, with respect to helping to sponsor the different books, Historic Hastings, Volume 1 in 1967, the county's official project at that time, and we're indebted to the Hastings County for doing that, I'm not sure what their project is going to be for the 150th anniversary of Confederation, but I'm sure that with the cooperation of the federal government and other levels of government, there will be something that will be done. Well, I'm delighted, I'm pleased, it's nice to see this happen, and thank heavens, the dream has been realized. Thank you.
Thanks, Jerry. Now, this is Archives Awareness Week in Ontario, which is a particularly auspicious time to be opening a new archives. And we have a special guest from out of town with us today. It's my great pleasure to introduce you all to another recently appointed archivist and another immigrant to Canada, the Chief Privacy Officer and Archivist of Ontario, Mr. John Roberts. Thanks, Amanda, and thanks, everyone. And I'd just like to add my congratulations on behalf of the Archives of Ontario to the, the community here for the wonderful uh, event that we're celebrating today and the wonderful facility that you've established. We have in our collections at the Archives of Ontario a number of records relating to Belleville and Hastings County, many of which were entrusted to us around 40 years ago when the, the state of the Archives preservation facilities were, as you've heard from Jerry, not the dream facility in the professionally run, secure, accessible place that you have today. For the past 40 years, we've been pleased to preserve and look after that material and keep it safe, but we're much, much happier to now be in a position to repatriate it to the community where it really belongs. So today we've brought the first... Well, the first instalment, a few volumes from the various communities that all come together uh, in the wonderful facility and initiative today, and over the next months we'll be uh, supplying another 20 metres or so of uh, valuable records relating to Hastings of Belleville County uh, to Amanda, to the community where they rightfully belong. So thank you very much and, and great to see another vibrant part of the archives of Ontario in its collective sense rather than just my institution. So well done. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nice to have you here, John. The um, Commonwealth also gave us Benny Hill, so please remember that. <laughs> it's time now for the official ribbon cutting, or we're getting around to it, as it were. Does anybody, I know that Amanda recognizes this, Sharon does, and so do quite a few other people here. Over a kilometer, or if you prefer a kilometer, but we know the kilometer is correct, uh, this cotton tape was used in the move from Church Street to this facility. I asked uh, Mayor Tasso Christopher to take one end of the uh, proverbial ribbon. And uh, to join these wonderful individuals, which you also welcome, Richard Hughes. Richard, you're at one end also. And uh, his honor, Rick Phillips. Rick? You go over there. <laughs> <laughs> so Rick is on my right. Now I'm going to ask that if you gentlemen would just move forward a little moment, please. And to join you, but behind you, as it were, for photo ops, how appropriate is this? Our member of parliament, Neil Ellis, archivist, Amanda Hill, City of Belleville Director of Recreation, Culture and Community Services, and one of the longest business cards you'll see, Mark Fuller, City of Belleville Properties Manager, Joe Carbrandt. Is this confusing or what? Past President of the Hastings County Historical Society, Chairman of the Capital Campaign, Orlin French. <laughs> CEO of the Belleville Public Library, Trevor Pross. And Provincial Archivist, John Roberts. Author and former city councillor, responsible for a current city councillor. And, uh, <clears throat> but then again, he had the edge, didn't he? he did. 
Appropriately, the uh, former history teacher, active member of the Hastings County Historical Society, uh, Hastings County Museum, the Glanmore House, and a bunch of other stuff, your friend and ours, Jerry Boyce, to do the official ribbon cutting. Ladies and gentlemen, the doors of the community archives are now officially open, and you are welcome to visit. Please, though, do not bring food or a drink into the archives. There are refreshments at the back of the galleries. Enjoy, and don't get a parking ticket. I'm just so much better looking, that's why.
And it's great. So, so what do you think of uh, this great day in the life of our city, Doug? Well, I'm happy to see it. It's been a long, long time coming. Yes, I want to congratulate each and every person who uh, never gave up and never wavered on the dream of protecting our past well, well, moving forward for our future. And it's, it's great to uh, be here and it's great to uh, know that our heritage will have a legacy um, forever for not only us, but our future generation. And I'm just ecstatic. I'm sure that in the future these are going to look very archaic. I think they are right now. In the basement of B. There are some things here, and you'd have to check. You follow me. <laughs> totally accessible, that's good to see. What what room in my office? This is the one of the floors. This is the smallest floor. So um, we've got these lovely mobile shelving racks. And these are all City of Belleville records here. Like um, uh, council minute, agendas and yeah, minutes. Yeah, minute books and those are uh, assessment roles. So they yeah, list for MPAC and... That's right, yeah. So they yeah. list every, every resident of Belleville <laughs> and what their house was worth, what they did for yeah, a living yeah, and that right. kind of thing. Right. So it's census data. Kind of, yeah, some of them. But, but except these were done every year. So these are the records that just came back from the archives of Ontario, so uh, somewhere there must be some paperwork to sign. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> John just drops it right. <laughs> we, we also um, uh, were discussing with the society that, uh, you know, they'll, they'll be um, the originals, but they're also, um, they're making every effort to to digitize everything yes, that yes. they can to so make it um, accessible online. Yeah. 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 Hi, hi. Oh. Well, it's yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes. Oh, happy. Yeah. Happy when you get to sleep, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Just email or Facebook and yeah, email. Us you want. There we go. Yeah, we'll so what I'll do is Oops. I'll probably do. Congratulations, Congratulations Arlen. Thank, Thank you. It's been a long time coming. Yeah, sure, sure yeah. has. Anyone involved with um, you know uh, preservation or any different groups is over the time uh, the deterioration of the materials yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so badly yeah. that yeah. so. Have a look in here. Because we, we knew this was on the radar, it was just a case of it was getting to that such such the critical Run. point. <laughs> and that's who it's all for. Come on then. Because <laughs> she lost forever in the archive. Cool. <laughs> that's cool, eh? Isn't that amazing? She'll have more energy than... What if we might have room for the devil also material in here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you just have to... Um, we worked out what well it's done. Yeah. There's another full touch to it. It's longer than this one, so it's sort of that length doubled. Um, <laughs> so, at the moment, we've got newspapers up there, and um, 
no mobile yes, shelving. So in the future, we could put mobile shelving up there as well, and then well, they eventually we have even more space. But at the moment, we've got so much empty space here. But, that, but that's good, because that means you have room for the stuff. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. It's, it's thinking long term. Oh, yeah, and that's good. Yes, like if I move this one down and keep moving, it will make that one down at the end wider. No, it's just. Oh, but you go down this end. Oh, that's right. Property here. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. 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 Here. Yeah. Yeah. Don't drip drip as it was in the thermal. Yeah. And then whatever happened? Oh. Whatever happened to the original? Yeah. Just to get this, that is so uh, high tech. Right. I'm, I'm amazed at the little bit. What happened to the original? Because they laid it. Okay. I don't want that. Well, you want a different place. Let's go. Yeah. They could give us a good donation. Orlin? Yeah. Oh. Happened to the Irish Hall? Does the city still own it? <laughs> yes, I guess they you do. You want your five thousand dollars back? Pardon? You want your five thousand no, dollars no, back? No, no, no. Remember that, though. They want. How about this one? Ooh, I like there's something with old books, like something old that tells books? me. I'm gonna have you get. Oh, that might work. Well, doesn't that water out? Here we are on the third floor. Yes, so these are all the shelves that we bought from Canifton. Um, so these had to be dismantled at Canifton, shipped and then rebuilt here, and then all the newspapers were, were put onto them. So the newspapers are in, they, they weren't in any particular order in Canifton, but we've now got them more or less in, in date order. So all the shelves were labelled with the dates of the newspapers that would go onto them. And then the removal men could just look at the newspaper box, see what the date was, and then just put it on the right shelf. So these are these are all from the 1990s, Belleville Intelligences. 1992 there. And some of them were in very bad condition, so we had to put, protect them in boxes. So um, just around Christmas, we got about 200 boxes arrive, which we then the volunteers then packed all of those fragile newspapers in, into these um, acid-free boxes. So I'll just show you what they look like inside in terms of how fragile they are. So we couldn't move them like this. This was just how they were on the shelf. So we had to um, put them in these boxes to make sure that they weren't going to get damaged during the course of the move. I'll just make sure I get that back on the right shelf. How far back did they go? Um, I think it's a, sorry, just walk backwards. Okay. <laughs> Let's have a look on the Back shelf. in time we go. Yeah, here we go. So 1867 is, mm -hmm. is the earliest intelligence. We have some other newspapers, I think, that are older than that, um, like the Ontario, uh, Hastings Chronicle, I think it is, goes back a bit further. But, uh, but yeah, so the intel goes right back to 1867, and up to the present day we're still collecting it. So, um, there are gaps. We, for some reason, don't have very good coverage for the 1980s. Um, but otherwise, it's, it's a fairly good set of records. This end of the room is, as you can see, empty. Well, apart from historical society display materials at the moment. But this could be um, shelved with more of those tall mobile shelves um, that we've got downstairs. So if we need room for expansion in the future, that's something we could, we could do in this space. And there's no problem. I know, I know a lot of the discussion earlier with some of the sites was the weight bearing. Yeah, so this, this has been built with that kind of weight in mind. So uh, the floors are, have got that degree of strength that they'll be able to hold that kind of weight on shelving. Thank you.